Hello everyone, Waymox here. Today I'm going to give you guys a demo of a project I've been working on. So essentially I've been building a WordPress plugin. I did it over the weekend. And essentially what it allows me to do is replace any text within these curly brackets. Um, now I can build any type of outline or any page template I want to do in Elementor. It only works with Elementor and that's all I really needed to work for. Um, and I did this specifically because I wanted to build up, make an API call and automatically generate that page. Um, so I did pay for this program right here, Page Generator Pro. We bought the agency license probably six months ago and I've been using it. It works pretty well. Um, my only two problems with it is essentially when I want to create content, I have to download everything into a CSV file. It says it has Airtable support and that is exactly why I bought it. But um, when you're generating content at the scale that we're generating it, and each row has so many fields, essentially what would happen is the system would pretty much um, it, it would pretty much crash. It wouldn't actually crash the program, but it wouldn't actually pull all of the information into the um, actual program itself. So what I ended to do is I ended up having to export all the information and then upload it and import into WordPress and then I could generate all the pages. My other problem with the program is essentially if I made a change on a particular page, from my understanding, every time I go and um, upload a new page, um, specifically here, I would have to either delete all of these rows or make sure that they actually don't come in from the new import but if I did that, I would have to either continuously keep adding um, new keywords here and it would regenerate it over the pages or I would have to continuously add new keyword templates into Page Generator Pro. And that's not going to be very scalable for what I want to do, particularly into the future. I, I want to be able to generate entire marketing funnels using the same type of program I have here. For an example, um, I want to build landing pages at scale, product pages at scale, um, ebooks at scale. Okay, the ebooks don't really come into the Elementor, but it's part of um, the entire system. When we generate the funnels, what I want to do is I want to be able to generate the actual funnel itself, generate the ebook, all the emails that go along with that, and then just automatically upload and then go into the programs themselves and edit if it needs to be edited. So that's what we were planning on doing. And the only way that we could do that was pretty much writing our own plugin that would pretty much make an API call. So what that's going to look like is I just give it the, um, well, I give a template, these curly brackets with um, a designated keyword. And let's actually go into the plugin itself that way you can get an idea of what it looks like. is an extremely basic plugin and this site is extremely slow. It needs to be rebuilt mainly because we've been doing too much testing on it and it was a domain name that I never really took seriously. Um, all right, so that's Page Generator Pro. Note, this is Page Generator. I We probably need to give it a different name. That was what we just put in the um, placeholder, but I think it's too close to Page Generator Pro. Um, all right, so what we need to do is we need to designate a actual page ID. And let me just go grab this from the curl. It was actually on the page itself that we just left, and that was why the page was up. Um, so what we need to do is we just need to put in the actual page ID. We'll do detect placeholders. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a list of all the placeholders in that page. Uh, for an example, these are image, so this is an image URL, um, and the rest are pretty much just text. Um, so from here, what we can do is we can then essentially just do a little copy of this curl. And I'm actually kind of curious on what the um, NADN, that's something that I'll have to take a look at. Um, all right, so if we're going to import this, all we would do is do HTTP request import curl and import and it automatically fills in all the JSON that we need which 
is why we built it the particular built it this way anyways um, so when we go to test page or test step what it's actually going to do is it's actually going to take all these placeholders and create our text for us so this is our original page ID this is our new page ID and this is the page URL And this is what it looks like. Obviously, I didn't replace um, every single thing, but um, I essentially replaced the core um, little sections. Um, what it allowed us to do is we essentially were able to generate this entire website um, from heat pumps, water heaters, plumbing, cooling, and heating. I, we generated, I think, roughly um, 37 pages, maybe a little bit more. Um, and it was all dictated from this right here. So yeah, 37 pages. Um, and what we did is we essentially just assign a keyword. We generate our title, our subtitle. We generate all the images. We're using Flux for that. And I'll go into this tool a little bit more in detail in another video. Um, we're essentially generating um, statistics for everything. And when we go to the actual page they're right here um, reasons to invest in emergency heat pump services for your home um, heat pumps can deliver two to four units of heat energy for every unit of electricity consumed um, and it's just pulling in actual statistics and what we did is we um, used perplexity to pull all that information in and then we had a custom agent that would actually go to the url and validate that that information is actually true um, the system that we built it's roughly 40 workflows and there's so much validation built into it that way we don't have to do it ourselves now granted that doesn't prove that um that content on that particular website is 100 percent factual and maybe when we're doing a little bit more stuff in the future we will actually um, pull more information from other sources to validate those um, statistics um, the other thing that we're doing is we're generating these um, little sections right here. Um, I've told it a hundred times not to use Markdown throughout the workflows, and it still does it occasionally. Um, so I have two choices here. I will either regenerate this in um, Airtable, or I'll just go in and I'll actually bold this section right here. Um, but essentially um, what we did is these are all pain points, and when people put in emergency heat pump services, and at Google, uh, let's see, maybe it's under emergency heat pump. All right, well, it's not going to actually pull it up on this one or this um, particular keyword. Um, I probably did not do it with. Uh, let's see if we can actually find that so you can get an idea where those are coming from. All right, it's um, right here um, from sources across the web. And these are just problems that people have with heat pumps regularly. Um, and that's where we're pulling um, those little um, issues or problems people have. Then we get a little bit about the company. We generate how it works. Um, mind you, this is all dynamic. Um, even these um, icons, what I did is I essentially um, give it enough information of I think it's using FA icon or whatever um, and I essentially gave it um, all of those icons that they can use and I just told it to match it up to the title whatever's closest um, and it generates all of that now there is some a very fair amount of CSS going into this because um, this right here will look like this um, span class le icon um, and then we have our font awesome font awesome icon and then our title and then our actual text um, that is exactly just how we're generating the content and that is um basically what this tool does and going into the future it's going to allow us to pretty much generate any type of content with elementor that we want 
And I think it's going to beat um, a lot of people that are building stuff in bulk when they're trying to build stuff in bulk. Um, I'll go into a little bit more on that in the next video, but essentially the next video I'm going to talk about is how to build a directory um, in 2025. And I'm going to give you an exact step and process of how we will do it. Um, I'm building out several right now, and we're just adding more to our directory portfolio. Um, and with AI, it's just making it so much easier. For example, with this website, um, what I've noticed with a lot of content writers is everybody's putting um, all of their outputs in a markdown. But we have WordPress, and a lot of stuff is based around HTML. So what we can do is we can actually um, just tell it to output everything in HTML. That way we can generate stuff like this. Um, these are just icon boxes, but it breaks up the content really nicely. And we can even have these FAQs directly in the page. Now, I don't know if Google will penalize us for this, but I can't imagine they will. Um, considering this is all schema markup. So if I go to... Um, a schema markup. Oh. Let's see, validator. And let's just go with Google. I think Google's works better than um, the schema.org. Of course, the next thing I know, Google will probably be um, crawling that test site just because I put the URL in here. But... All right, there we go. So test live. All right, so it's detecting our FAQ schema. All of our questions. And I'll probably have to check to see why it's saying unnamed item there. Um, as far as I know, everything should be fully valid. Uh, screenshot. Yeah, everything looks fine there. Uh, so that's really all I got in this video. Um, in the next one, I'll show you guys how to build a directory. Um, if you have any questions about how we built the plugin or if you're interested in learning a little bit more of how we're generating our content, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.